doesn't work like that. And even though I'm preaching here to you about why you shouldn't be paying attention to this, I'm totally guilty of it myself. I was writing up the notes for this presentation there the other evening. That, that exact slide talking about why followers aren't important, this is actually is a true story. I'm a nerd, I was lying in bed and I was doing the notes on my Blackberry and I got an email in. Now, in Enterprise Ireland, in the Internet Marketing Unit, we run a discussion forum <clears throat> for our members. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an online discussion forum where uh, small to medium enterprise owners and non-techies can come and ask questions about technical subjects. You know, so they can ask about new software and they can ask about you know, uh, whatever it is around online marketing that, that, that they have an issue with. And I have a set of metrics around this discussion forum and they're strategic metrics and I'm going, to, I'm going to show you them on the next slide. They don't include the follower size. They don't include the discussion forum size. What's the first thing that I look at? I get this email at midnight every day. What's the first number that I look at on that screen? Normal members. That's how many people are active on that community. 807. I know now it's 809 because I checked it earlier on this morning. Every day I check it and I still look at it because it makes me feel good. That's great. It's going the right way. It's no good. So I'm, I'm as guilty. And it's really hard to pull yourself away from that. Now, you can't, there's no numbers on that, so don't be craning your necks, everyone. There's no, this is just, it's just a nice orange line going along. This is what we're actually measuring <clears throat> around the community. And these are good generic measurements that you can apply to any sort of online community that you run, be it a discussion forum that you're hosting yourself or a LinkedIn group that you manage on behalf of your business. We look at the number of new discussions. Sorry, I'm going to step back. These metrics are measuring, the, we, 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 they're, they're operational metrics. They're metrics that measure the community health, how healthy and active that community is. The size, you can see why size isn't important there. If I'm thinking about, do I have a, a vibrant, strong community, size shouldn't be important, size doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so we track the number of new discussions, because that's good. You know, if it's, if it's more than it was last month or it's around the same, I'm happy. If it's going down again, I'm, I'm starting to get worried. We track the, number, the percentage of discussions that have responses on them, because that's better. That means that someone isn't just talking to themselves. You know, so if I get lots and lots of discussions that have zero responses, I know something's wrong. Maybe I need to get in there and I need to seed a couple of questions. Maybe I need to steer discussions in certain directions. And I track the number of new users as a trend. Not the, not the final count, but how much I'm growing by or I'm, 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 I'm falling by monthly. So the 807 or the 800 odd, that's not important. It's what my growth is. That's important. That, again, that's an indicator of community health. Okay? So that's, that's just an illustration of even though we do have, we have, we, have, we have monthly metrics and we all sit down and we say, this is great because it's positive, blah, blah, blah. I still look at that follower number because it makes me feel good. And, and this is, this is like the social media trap because it's about personality. It's about one-on-one -on -one engagement. So you are going to feel good when someone follows you because it, it's a reflection on yourself. So that's, that, that's hard to break out of. Okay, so why do we measure at all? We, we measure and we look at the analytics because, as, as I said in the, the, the Winston Churchill moment earlier on, we've never had such an opportunity to know so much about our users. Um, you, you can get the world of information using very, very basic tools that are freely available. Tools like Google Analytics, which everyone has installed. Every, show of hands, every, every, people are using Google Analytics to, to, on, on their website. Keep your hands up. <coughs> Who checks Google Analytics more than once a week? Oh. Who has made a change to their website based on the information coming in on Google Analytics? Oh, yeah. What's that? That's about 5%. Right, so that information, that's just feeding your ego. It's nice to go in and look at Google Analytics and go, look, I got, you know, five visitors from Indonesia. That's brilliant. You know, because you've got that colored map, it's cool. You know, you'd sit all day looking at it. So you've got an opportunity to better understand your users. You also have an opportunity to make decisions, and this is that, that, that's that point there. It's doing something with that information. It's making decisions based on fact, or as close as you're going to get to fact without sitting a customer down and asking them questions. You have this opportunity to see why they're coming to your site, where they were before they came to your site, or your, or your social media projects. So when, when, when I say come to you, I'm talking corporate website, I'm talking Facebook page, I'm talking YouTube, whatever your platform, your weapon of choice is this evening, when they come to you, you get this information. But you make strategic business decisions based on that fact, not because you feel like it, and certainly not because your web developer said that this is definitely the thing that you should be doing because that's the geek trap. You know, a developer says you have to have 
X because all the cool kids have X and you, your site looks rubbish because you don't have it. Bad decision, don't do it. So measurement is a good idea in general. So that's the $100 question, $100 million question. What do I measure? All this stuff that's coming to my website. And I have the ultimate cop out of the answer. It depends. It depends on what you're trying to achieve. It depends on who your customers are. It depends on what your business sector is. And it depends on, on what your ultimate drivers of business are. Um, and that's, that's not the answer you wanted here. You wanted me to say there's this one magic thing. It's this number that you have to add. It's this piece of script on your site and everything's done. It doesn't work like that. This is difficult. It's difficult to, 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 to put this into place and you have to work hard to understand why you're doing this and figure out what it is you're trying to achieve. So you need to write down an objective. This is, this is coming back to marketing 101. Why are we doing this? What is the objective of, of, of having, having my corporate site? We, we had a discussion earlier on. Should we even have corporate websites? And we, had, we, had a, we had a good old chat about that and people kind of said, yeah, probably you should have a website. But what's the objective? Everyone here has a corporate website, right? Hands up again. This is a good one. I like this. Hands up. Who has written down the one thing that their website is? So somebody started put, putting down your hands quickly. I haven't finished the question yet. Who has written down what the one thing that your website is for? The one thing that it's supposed to achieve? That's better than, than the analytics one earlier on anyway. But you need to do that for all of your social media projects. You've got to do that next time you're thinking of having a YouTube channel. What am I trying to achieve? What is the objective of having this YouTube channel? How is it getting me closer to closing a sale? Always be closing. So you set SMART goals. And SMART there is an, is a, is a, an acronym. I'm going to go through SMA or T. SMART S specific. It's an actual thing I'm trying to achieve. It is one particular aspect of my business that's going to be improved and that's going to be different after I've had this project in place. M is for measurable, obviously. It's gotta have something that you can track. A is for achievable. It has to be some way realistic. You can't say I'm going to be, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna have more online sales than iTunes next year. You know, that's, that's lovely, you know, but that's, that's mission statement. That's not, that's not objective. Um, or, or is resourced. And that's really important. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more later on. But if you're saying that this is of importance to my business, if this is an objective that's going to make a difference in my business, well then you're gonna to have to put someone or a, you know, a portion of someone onto that, biz, onto that objective. It's, you know, it's got to be effectively resourced. Um, and T is time-based, <clears throat> so it has to have an end game. Because otherwise, you, you know, you're just kidding yourself and it's like you're putting it on the never-never. So some, some, some examples of objectives would be reduce customer service costs by 25% by quarter four or you know, increase qualified leads by 10% by quarter two. They're, they're smart objectives you know, because I've got something specific and concrete I'm aiming at and it's got an, an, an end date against it. So this is an example. Now, this is the world away from measuring your followers. This is the complete opposite end of the spectrum. And it's, it's a much bigger business than any of us here are, any of us would, would, would possibly ever be. It's Lenovo, which is just the brand of laptops that IBM produce. <clears throat> and, and I think this is, this is a nice example of the kind of objectives that you can set yourself for using social media. Sure, we're not all Lenovo. We don't have the resources that they have to put into a social media project. But very simply, they built a community center online, an online discussion forum for their customers to answer customer service queries themselves. You know, they'll do it. There's not, you, you see these, 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 these kind of sites a lot of the time. You know, fellow users will, will, will recommend suggestions and solutions to your problems. So when they set out to do that, they said, right, we're going to build a self-service customer service portal. And we think that these are the things that are going to happen. We think that the laptop service call volumes will drop and we'll put a metric in place around that. They did. They dropped 20%. Um, we think that the, the productivity of our customer service agents will improve. Again, it did. Don't know the numbers on that one. You can look it up online. The problem resolution cycle time dropped and our net promoter score improved. So they put in very specific objectives and they tracked them and they were able to say that the customer service platform delivered on these things. It made a difference to, to, to the business there. Just a quick tangent. Does, do are people familiar with net promoter score? No? Anyone? Anyone using it in their business? Net Promoter Score is cool. Net Promoter Score is, uh, it, it's, it's sort of touted as the ultimate question and the ultimate um, figure. It's the one number you're supposed to track to see how successful your business is. It's very simple. 
Um, anytime you do business with one of your customers, anytime you do any sort of transaction, you ask them a question. It's the ultimate question. You say on a scale of one to 10, how likely would you be to recommend this service or product to your family or friends? And it's an open question. You can get a little bit more insight and you know, qualitative stuff after that. To calculate your net promoter score, you add up all the nines and tens, that's good. You ignore the sevens and eights, that's ambivalent. And you detract all the ones to sixes which is a pretty big chunk of the answers. You're only looking at the nines and tens. Take one away from the other and what you're left with is your net promoter score. And it's the percentage of people, the nines and tens, who are most likely to recommend your service. Every one of us knows that that resonates straight away. Recommendation, everyone here has bought something or you know, bought a service or a product based on a recommendation. So that's really, really powerful. So net promoter score is a nice way to track your business. And it's something that we can all start implementing very simply. You don't have to actually track the numbers, but start asking questions to your customers after you've done business with them. Would you recommend me? Yes or no, that's good. The other thing you should ask is how did you hear about me as well, which is more information for you. Okay. <laughs>